All right, guys, going to be talking about Love Bites, Winds of Transylvania. It's a wonderful song, and in this video, we're going to be asking, what makes this song so awesome? Okay, and if you like this sort of thing, make sure you like and subscribe. Here we go. Let's check this out. As you know, Love Bites is a band from Japan that just so happens to be all female. They play heavy metal. Some might say, but it's power metal. A lot of it is power metal, but not all of it is power metal. I'm not exactly sure what you'd call Winds of Transylvania just awesome. Maybe symphonic metal. I'm not exactly sure. It's bold it's grand. It's it's the composition is just boom. And yeah, so before I get ahead of myself, we will talk about what makes this song so sweet. What are some really sweet things about the song? What are some awesome things about the song? And what are some things that are just well not really working? What are some things that I don't think are working for anybody? We'll get there. There's there is one thing. I promise you. And you might agree. All right. But let's start off with what makes this song so sweet. Actually, before we get to that little thing here, this song here, Winds of Transylvania, do you know where it was released? Do you know how it was released? Uh, there's a ch there is a good chance that you might be a Love Bites fan, being that you know you listen to their music, you've been to their show, but you might not, you might not have heard this song, maybe. Okay, so it's a song that was actually written for an anime called Vlad Love. But the, don't worry about the anime. It, it is what it is. So it's not the best. But anyway, but the song was written for it. Okay? It, it's quite a bit of composition for an anime song. Uh, I, I would say it is the best thing. It is the best thing about that anime. And it's just fantastic. Okay? Uh, and then it was officially released through the, what, Heavy Metal Never Dies, I believe. Oh, and they released it, like, on the live uh, on the live performance there. Uh, so you can get it that way. So, anyway, as some, someone might try to fact, someone may fact check me in the comment section, which is welcomed. I mean, I'm not a czar here. This is based on the information I had here. Anyway, what makes this song so sweet? What are some sweet things about it? Well... Right from the beginning, Miyako's piano. Miyako's piano is in the song. It's a little intro in the beginning. It's beautiful, especially when they play it live. As you know, Miyako, why use a backing track when you have a piano right there on stage? Let's just use that. And she most definitely does. And you know it sounds beautiful. It sounds elegant. It's just great. Beautiful. Love it. Another really sweet thing about this song is the drumming the drumming with a purpose and power i mean the drumming is just so good and it's the backbone of everything else but it's it's it, and when i say that i mean everything else there's there's not just guitars roaring and, and, and very explosive there's not just like a, a bass there there's not just vocals there's like these uh, strings that are added. There, there are some effects from like a keyboard that you could hear kind of in the background at times. And, and that's one of the things that's really awesome about this song, the neoclassical composition, the overall composition. It, it just has this big, bold energy, very epic. I know people don't like that word, but it fits here. Very grand, I should say. It, it sounds large. It is large. Like when you hear it, you're like, whoa, that is like a heavy metal symphony. It is a heavy metal symphony. It, it, it right? Right. Uh, that is something that's totally awesome about the song. Um, what else is totally awesome or totally sweet? Oh, Asami's vocals. Another sweet thing about this song here, about Winds of Transylvania, Asami's vocals, the way they're paired with the drumming, the pacing of that, I love it. It's perfect. Especially when they sing it live. Oh, man. It's well-timed, well-rehearsed. It's like, yes, yes. Now, granted, I don't always understand what Asami's saying. But you know what? I'm not even nitpicking on that. That's not even in my... Oh, it's not working for this song. It's not. It's not. Okay? But bear with me. Get wet. Get ready. Because there is something. Okay. Another sweet thing about this song is just the way 
the dual guitars play the the way they're playing different rhythm licks there's different riffs going on at the same time and they weave together this solid composition it's incredible miyaku midori's guitars i mean th this does elevate the sweet thing it's it's an awesome thing they're churning together right churning together playing these cool riffs both are playing very cool things and there's moments where they swap from rhythm to lead it, it no one no one's cutting any corners in this song no one's taking a little breather to relax no they're they're everyone everyone in the band is cranked up to to 11 as far as like like just like performance okay but Miyako and Midori, definitely, the way they trade off, like Midori will do like these awesome uh, guitar roars, which is another awesome thing about this song, about Winds of Transylvania. Midori, I absolutely love this technique that she does. It is beautiful. It's almost like a trademark of hers. Whenever you hear it, you know it's Midori. Whenever she makes your guitar roar, it's a very cool thing that she has where she'll make her guitar roar like a creature from hell. Okay, it's very intense. It is it is so cool, though. In, in this song, there is a particular style to it, a sound to it, that sounds so fitting for the freaking title of it. Winds of Transylvania, perfectly titled. When you hear this song with everything combined, the backbone, you got the drumming there, you got the, the, the motor, the energy, okay? The engine that's powering everything. And then you got the, the cool riffs, then you got Midori's like guitar roaring. Like the way it sounds, it paints a landscape in your mind's eye. A landscape, a portrait, okay? An illustration, maybe a watercolor, I don't know, I don't know. But it's, it's something out from Castlevania, those games. It's something very gothic. It's something of a, like, Dracula's castle with a red, a, a blood red moon that's casting some light, uh, radiating some light. Some light is spilling from it, okay, into the night sky. I love it. It's great. I, I, and maybe, maybe, maybe a very fiery picture. That's what I see. It just sounds so cool. What Midori does here. It's very cool. Not only does she do the roar, but she slides down and she didn't do like I guess these hammer on techniques. You know, other guys can give you the more detailed breakdown of those techniques, but you know what I'm talking about. All right. Another awesome thing about this song is not just the solos. The solos are absolutely amazing. What they're doing, if you pay attention on stage, the way they're playing with the pedal, especially Miyako there. Uh, very cool. It just sounds so distinct and unique compared to other Love Bites songs. But there's this harmonizing that they do afterwards when they go regroup back into the main uh, riff. And it's just so freaking awesome. It really, I cannot say that enough. Okay. I know. I'm a Love Bites fan, maybe super fan. Uh, I only have one hat. If I have five hats... I'd be a super fan, but only one hat. So, so just a normal fan. Okay. But, and I know I'm biased, but I love this song and I think it is truly awesome. And I think these things that I mentioned are some of the things, some of the highlights of it that are just, yeah, yeah. If you think I missed something, you let me know in the comments section, but I have one more thing. What is something about this song that's just not awesome? Something not working for anybody. I'll tell you right now, what's not working for Winds of Transylvania, it's not played as much live. It needs to be played more. It needs to be played. I would appreciate it. I would love it. I would love it. I, I'll tell you what. I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to compromise. I love Shadowmaker. Shadowmaker is a great song. But, hey, if you swap out Shadowmaker for Winds of Transylvania every now and then, that, hey, I would not be complaining. In fact, that seems like a logical swap out. It, they both have like this gothic sound to it. The one much more, one's more subtle, one's more direct. Okay. <laughs> Guess which one that is. All right. But that's, that's the thing that I think doesn't work for anybody. It's not played as much as it should be live. Okay. That's what I think. That's what I think there. 
You guys let me know in the comment section where you agree, disagree, and all that. Um, and I'll join you guys in the comments, try to anyway, and be, and be part of that conversation there. With that said, you guys take it easy and have a good one.